YouTube, what is up? Let's do some brakes today. I have a 2014 BMW 535 X-Drive M Sport. I've got to do some rear brakes. Brakes are like the soda pop of cars. They're really easy to do. People make a lot of money on them and you should know how to do them yourself. So we'll do, we'll go over the tools and the parts in this video and help you learn how to do the rear brakes on this Beamer. Um, and it's gonna be similar to the front. Fronts are actually a little bit easier, but we're doing rears today. So let's take a look at our parts. On BMWs, I like to use the Acubono pads. They're really good. On this car for the rears, it is the Euro 1473. Um, they're an OE quality pad. So see the OEM. And so they're a little, little more than like your checker brand, but you'll be thankful you did. And there's nothing worse than doing brakes and having them squeak all the time or giving you problems. They fit good, they work good. That's what I'd recommend. I'll link them in the description. I'll link all the parts and tools in the description if you guys wanna buy this stuff. Use my links, it helps me out. Uh, here's the brake pad sensor. So once, once that little piece is worn down, it makes a connection and it throws the light on on your dash. So you'll get a brake line or a service soon on your brakes. If you keep an eye on your brakes and you just change them before you hit the sensor, which is good to do anyway, then you don't have to buy a sensor. Unfortunately, this car, it has hit the sensor, so I do need the sensor. The other thing you're gonna need for this car is going to be the scanner. So the UTEL, that'll be our first step. You have to electronically release the rear parking brake. So you have to put it into service mode. It's not hard, but you will need the tool. This is also, this will also do like your ABS or your SRS stuff, um, all your check engine light stuff. So it's just good to have, if you have a modern car, you gotta have a scanner guys. So it's pretty cheap. I think it's like 110 bucks. You gotta have it. I've heard of people taking apart the electronic parking brake. Trust me, do not do that. Just buy a scanner, you'll be happy. Um, next tool, I do have a lift. Um, so I'm lucky, but even if you don't have a lift, you can just do, just jack up one side at a time. Um, when you bust off the lugs, these BMW wheels are hub centric and sometimes the rim will get stuck on the hub. So you'll just leave in, um, and I will show you guys, but you'll just leave in one of the lugs and just tap it with the dead blow and it'll pop off. You'll leave in one loose. Um, I got my Ingersoll Rand impact for just popping off the lug nuts. You need a 13 millimeter to get the, uh, to be able to service the brake pads. Um, I always love my, uh, my Milwaukee uh, ratchet. It is awesome. I'll use it to pull off the caliper. It's a great, great tool. And then this little beauty I think this is a Lysol. These are so sweet. I have used this tool so much. So this is to compress, instead of an old school clamp, this will compress your brake pads and compress that piston so you can put the new pads in. And then a 17 mil for your lugs. So that's all of our parts and tools that we're gonna need. It's really not a hard job. Everybody should learn how to do brakes. It's easy. Um, it's, I don't know, it's therapeutic for me. I liked it. I like to service my cars. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get in the car and work on the electronic brake stuff. So I will be back in just a second. All right, guys, what is up? All right, so we're in the car. I've got the UTEL scanner plugged in the OB2 port, and we're going to go to electronic parking brake. So I'm going to go to European. BMW, so we need to turn the ignition off for 10 seconds. It's got to get a connection with the car. I'm going to go down to 5 Series. This is an F10. Go down to Parking Brake. Let it get communication with it. Turn engine off. Turn engine on. Go to workshop mode. And what we need to do is we need to go down to 
Number four, before a change of brake calipers or brake pads in the rear. And we're going to click on that. Let's see, pull parking brake button and wait for three seconds until brake is applied. Okay. Okay, so I had to turn it on, turn it off. So now it's going to unscrew the parking brake all the way so you're able to compress the calipers. If it wasn't Okay, so we got it. So if you don't do this, you will not be able to compress the rear caliper. So this is super important. You've got to have the UTEL scanner or a scanner that can do your parking brake stuff. So now the parking brake, the electronic parking brake is all the way screwed in and now I can compress the caliper. Um, I still have to compress the hydraulic part of the caliper too. So we're ready to get the wheel off and work on getting the new brake pads in. So let's go do that. All right, guys, let's get this wheel off, get to the rear brakes. We did the electronic parking brake, so it's released um, the caliper, so we can actually compress these. Got the Ingersoll. I love these 17 mils uh, with the plastic sleeve. They're just awesome. They won't scratch up your rim. Uh, highly recommend them. Okay. So we want to leave one bolt on the top in. Um, just to be able to knock it off the, the hub centric. These beamer wheels, they're usually stuck and this one is too. So. Get your dead blow and just a couple of, couple of taps. That's why you leave the bolt in. I usually just kind of barely put it back on, buzz the bolt off. And then you're good to go. We'll pull that guy off. Okay, if you want, you can clean these up um, with like a wire brush. It does help the next time you use it. Um, So if you just clean them off, they'll come on and off a little easier. Okay, I'm gonna change where the camera is, get back here to the caliper and we'll work on doing the brake pads. Okay, if this is the first time these bolts have come off, they're probably Loctited. You do need a 15 millimeter wrench on the opposite side of the bolt, and they're gonna be a little tight um, with blue Loctite. Kinda get them going. And knock it right out. Let's see. Yeah, these things, man, the first brake job with that blue Loctite, it's always a pain. All right, 
There we go. So now we can pull the caliper off. And start working on compressing it. So I'm going to change the camera angle and we'll get all this stuff. Okay, grab yourself a bungee, throw it through here just so it's not hanging. Just throw it up on the coil spring. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to throw these pads back in here just to create some space so like we can get our brake compressor in and create some space in there. So this will comp compress the caliper. It's an awesome little tool. It works on almost every caliper and it works great. So much easier than an old school clamp. We'll get this thing compressed down. We'll be able to slide in our new pads and put it back together. So that's all the way compressed. Take those ones out. Let's grab our new Acubono pads. And these are identical. Both sides are the same. And let's slide those into the clips. It comes with new clips. If you want to change them, you can. I Unless they're like look really bad, I usually don't change them, but that's up to you. Um, it's just easier just to slide them in and I've never had a problem using the old clips. Okay, so that's in. And we take this guy. And get him squared away. You have to kind of push these bolts in a little bit. And slide that on. Let's grab our bolts. Just get these finger tight here. Get them started. go. Grab your 15 millimeter and your Milwaukee. Get it nice and tight. And that's it. Okay, on the brake sensor, it is in this little box. You'll wanna just get a screwdriver. There's a couple of clips right here that you can pop. It'll open up. The best way to do this is just to pop the old one out. Pop this guy out and then just kind of follow it. That way you know you're gonna get it in the same way that you took it out. So do the same thing. Okay. It is now in there. We'll throw it in. Just line up all the grommets. You can close this guy back up. And then just make sure you follow the the same pattern. It is pretty simple. They should all line up correctly. Pull that guy around. Okay, now this piece, the little bump has got to go towards the rotor. Has a little clip, make sure the little bump is going towards the rotor. Just wanted to show you the routing of the sensor. So we clipped it in, then it's first one down there, second one right there, 
third spot right there, and then um, your fourth spot is right here. Then we're here. Through the um, through the brake fluid bleeder, and then into the brake pad with the nipple kind of facing facing the rotor. So that's your rear brake sensor routing, if you will. All right, cool. All right, anytime you take a wheel off, you gotta make sure and torque them. So I used to do like 110 foot pounds, still at 17 millimeter, but make sure that you got them tight. That one's a little loose. And then you're good. You don't want your wheel falling off on you. All right, so last thing we gotta do is reset the electric parking brake. Let's do that now. Okay, guys, so we gotta go back out to startup on the scanner. Engine off, ignition on. Set the parking brake. Okay, and we're done. So that just resets the parking brake, gets the proper distance um, on the brake rotor, and we're good to go. So you definitely, you gotta have the scanner Invest in it one time. You can check your codes. You can check airbag lights. You can, you know, you can do your electronic parking brake. You got to have it. So if you want to do your own brakes, just buy the scanner. I promise it's a tool you'll love to have. It works great for everything. Um, but yeah, so there you go. We got the electronic parking brake all squared away. All right, guys. One last final step. So we need to get this thing turned on. And you press and hold this button on the dash. Okay, rear brake pads in 450 miles. Release and then press and hold again. It says reset. Press and hold again. Let the countdown go. Boom. There you go. Now your sensor's reset. Um, and your service and stuff is ready to go. So there you go. All right, guys, thanks. Watching my video, I'm just gonna go over the tools one more time. I added a couple things. We got a 15 millimeter that you're gonna need, a screwdriver to change the, um, the brake sensor, torque wrench. If you don't have one, get a good torque wrench. You need to torque your lugs back on. Um, again, just buy the scanner, it's worth it. I love the Milwaukee. You can either do an air impact or an electric air impact works great. On a 535, it is a 14, 1473. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching it. If you want to thank me, use my links. I'll link all the tools, the best brakes for the best prices. If you want to hook me up and thank me for this video, just use my links. I'd appreciate it, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks.